Good evening. I hereby call to order the July 17, 2017 Council Meeting of the City of Mayfield Heights. May I have a roll call, please? Mr. DeJohn? Here. Mrs. Finney? Here. Mr. Mano? Here. Mr. Mercurio? Here. Mrs. Sabetta? Here. Mrs. Snyder? Here. Mrs. Trussie? Here. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. We'll now move on to approval of the minutes of our last meeting and held on June 26, 2017. I hope everyone's had the opportunity to read them. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? Moved by Mrs. Snyder, seconded by Mrs. Finney. Are there any suggested changes, deletions, or amendments to the meeting um, minutes? Seeing none, all in favor of approval of the minutes signify by saying aye. 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 Abstain. Why did you abstain, Mr. Tr I was absent from the meeting. Thank you. The minutes have been approved as written. As this is a special council meeting, there will be no committee meeting, uh, committee minutes, or reports of officers, boards, uh, this evening. We will also forego the public portion and if you have an agenda item this evening you can come forward when we discuss that item through the agenda. I'd like to, um, you know, every Memorial Day I talk about my daughter who was in the Air Force and tonight she's here. She just retired from the Air Force after 20 years so Stephanie and uh, is here. Stand up Steph. This is the young lady that served 20 years in the Air Force. One of 17% of the women who have uh, been in the Air Force for 20 years. So since she came all the way from Texas, I thought we would finally introduce her so everybody knew who she was. We will now move on to our resolutions and we'll begin with resolution 2017-41. Mr. Murphy. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chairman. Resolution number 2017-41, a resolution confirming the action of the Board of Zoning Appeals of the City of Mayfield Heights in granting to Bo Chen Yu, 1359 Ranchland Drive, a variance to widen the driveway on said property to 17 feet. Cuyahoga County Permanent Parcel Number 861-05-080. First reading. Is there a motion to suspend the rules? Moved by Mr. Mercurio, seconded by Mrs. Finney. Roll call on the motion to suspend. Mr. Mano? Yes. Mr. Mercurio? Yes. Mr. DeJohn? Yes. Mrs. Sabetta? Yes. Mrs. Finney? Yes. Mrs. Snyder? Yes. Mrs. Tressy? Yes. Do I have a motion to approve? Moved by Mr. Mano, seconded by Mrs. Snyder. This was case 1111 at BZA. The applicant um, requested a variance to widen his current driveway from 10 feet to 17 feet, four feet on the left and three feet on the south side of the existing drive. It was a unanimous approval by um, BZA. Mr. Mercurio, would you like to, to add anything? Um, this was one of those typical cases that we've heard before with um, the applicant had it has one of the houses on ranch land. It's a attached one car garage um, on that street. I think Mr. Kramer counted. There's 54 houses that have that uh, driveway widening, and we've approved a few recently on Bell Rose. Pretty much a no-brainer. Any other comments? Discussion. Roll call on the motion to approve. Mr. DeJohn. Yes. Mrs. Snyder. Yes. Mrs. Finney? Yes. Mr. Mercurio? Yes. Mr. Mano? Yes. Mrs. Sabetta? Yes. Mrs. Tressy? Yes. Resolution 2017-41 has been approved. We'll move on to resolution 2017-42. Mr. Murphy. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, resolution number 2017-42, 
a resolution confir confirming the action of the Board of Zoning Appeals of the City of Mayfield Heights in granting to Rick Phipps, 1263 Commonwealth Avenue, a variance to widen the front walk on said property, Cuyahoga County Permanent Parcel Number 861-19-045. First reading. Is there a motion to suspend the rules? Moved by Mrs. Finney. Seconded by Mrs. Snyder. Roll call on the motion to suspend. Mrs. Finney? Yes. Mrs. Sabetta? Yes. Mrs. Snyder? Yes. Mr. Mano? Yes. Mr. DeJohn? Yes. Mr. Mercurio? Yes. Mrs. Tressy? Yes. Do I have a motion to approve? Moved by Mr. Mano. Seconded by Mr. Mercurio. This applicant also requested a variance from BZA to widen, whoop, to widen his sidewalk from the current three feet wide to the widest point, 13 feet, four inches. It was not a unanimous approval from BZA. Mr. Mercurio, would you like to add anything, please? Yeah, this was a, it was a three to one approval uh, by the BZA. I was the one that actually voted no on it. Um, the applicant stated that the reason for the variance is to enlarge the front walk to facilitate a, uh, a future wheelchair ramp. And as you said, the applicant's going to replace a three foot wide walkway with, a, with pavers actually that taper out um, to 13 feet, four inches near the driveway. Um, now the wheel tramps, the wheel uh, chair ramps that I have seen um, really don't require a, con a concrete walkway or pavers um, as a base. Um, they're built using posts as a support, uh, much like a deck. And I have a couple examples if, Show them if I can go the up podium. there. talking about is I don't see the need to widen the walkway for a wheelchair ramp as you can see in these examples um, wheelchair ramps are built much like a deck where you have the posts going right into the ground uh, for support and uh, my take is that you don't need that widened sidewalk because um, that ramp has to be fastened into the ground and not on a paver I know the applicant said that he is going to be use, using pavers, um, but when the time does come uh, that we'll be building this ramp, he's going to have to pull those pavers up, put the posts into the ground. So that was my basis uh, for voting no on this. Did the other members of BZA feel that it was a practical difficulty? or um, They did, and I couldn't quite understand the reason for it, to be honest with you. Yes, Mrs. Snyder. Um, what type of a ramp are they talking about? Because a lot of the handicap ramps aren't permanent fixed, you know, they're not permanently put in. Um, actually, there was actually uh, no guarantee that there was going to be a ramp built. Um, there was no plan submitted, so there was no detail given um, on what type of ramp was eventually going to be built, if one's going to be built at all. Is the applicant here? The applicant is here. Would you like to say anything? Would you like to come forward and speak at the podium? <coughs> Please state your name and address for the record. Ad address for the record. I'm Rick Phipps, and I live at 1263 Commonwealth. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, those ramps are really nice. I've seen some of them like that, but I'm sure all the rest of you have seen ramps that are not permanent, that are set on posts or metal posts that just sit on the, on the ground. Um, that's what my plan was. Um, <clears throat> I had to redo the front walk to begin with. I thought now would be the perfect time to do this. My wife is going to wind up in a wheelchair. And I just thought, why do it twice? And so this will facilitate our needs in the future. And that's why I'm looking for your approval. Thank you. Any questions? Mr. DeJohn. Um, I have three drawings here. The one with the uh, red lines on it. Can you explain that to me, please? 
class. This one? Let me open it up for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's the proposed ramp in the future. Um, Can you point that out to me, the ramp? Here in the, in the red, coming from the front porch down to the um, new sidewalk next to the driveway. Okay. Okay, and um, <clears throat> we've got approximately 36 inches of uh, difference between the front door and the driveway, and that would require 36 feet of, uh, of ramp. If the switchbacks comes out to rough what you see there. The bottom of the ramp will fall right on the extended portion of the sidewalk. And how big is that area? That area is um, uh, across the driveway is 13 feet 4 inches. Patio tapers back against the black line. Trying to trying to make it look nice and also be functional. Well, your yard is beautiful. The landscaping is lovely. Uh, your it's garage just door. All I, my front yard right now. I apologize. It, well, I mean, I know it. You know that sidewalk area, but the the house is is really beautifully maintained. Thank garage you. was garage doors, which I noticed were are very expensive garage doors, but it looks just beautiful. We try. Yes did a good job. Thank you. Um, I do have a question, though, for Mr. Jameson. Is, uh, do we um, have permits for when they put up a ramp? Do they come before the building department and get a permit? And do you, would you go, would you speak at the podium? I'm sorry. Come to another issue. They come in and uh, submit drawings for a wheelchair we don't approve the metal ones. They're they're not uh, the metal type ramps are don't meet code. They're temp. They're they're people that want to use those travel at their own risk. But do you give them a permit? Because I've seen a couple of the um, are the aluminum. Yeah, <laughs> you haven't you haven't seen yeah. any new ones. Mm. You haven't seen any new ones. I hate to say I have. Well, then that's why I wondered if I uh, when I saw it, I wondered if there was a, a they, someone they had to would take have a put permit it up on their own and travel at their own mm -hmm. risk with it. Mr. Mano. Mr. Jameson, if this gentleman came in to get a permit to build what he's got here, would you have any problem issuing that permit? I mean, for a wheelchair ramp? That, but I'm saying you'd have five feet of porch added onto the front door line of the house. That's it. They were going to allow patios in the front yard, it would have stayed there. So, from patios, we went to I forget uh, each one, each uh, how we ended up with him widening the, 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 the private wall. I let him know that you can only replace what is already there in the driveway. You can only replace what's what what is there. You cannot increase it with and, and it tells you a maximum amount of landscaping shall be maintained around each dwelling unit. Paving and similar surfaces, meaning pavers, shall be confined to driveways, patios, and walks. No paving paving of similar surfaces services for driveways, parking, storing of vehicles, or any kind other than that is permitted. You can't do anything more than the original plan. So my thinking is he's doing more to the original plan by attaching the patios to the driveway. I mean, uh, the, this, uh, the landscape pavers to the driveway. It widens it. So if you think of the way that's written for driveways and then you go to uh, the idea that hold on one second the idea that uh, turnarounds are only allowed in backyards and turnarounds are only allowed in rear yards it doesn't let you widen the driveway follow my thinking, I mean, if we were to allow people to widen their private wall out of the wider
right as he wants it, then why don't we do that? I mean, what's the limit? There's no parameters for that. That's why you don't see patios in people's front yard. You don't see pavers in people's front yard. Pardon me? You said there were no parameters for that. Well, I'm just trying to give them on a So is it really going to be a patio or, or a walkway? Temporarily it'll be a walkway as well. But when the wheelchair ramp goes in, then that will be that. I have a, a letter from a doctor I really needed and some uh, really tougher medical problems with stating that she's out of jail. Mr. Oh, Ressi. Uh, Mrs. Finney. Uh, Mr. Jamison, in your expert opinion, should we vote for this? In, in his opinion, he denied the permit. So they have requested a variance. So his opinion it. doesn't matter anymore. It's up <laughs> right. to the Board of I Zoning Appeals. I just wanted appeals. to give you my thinking leading me up to my decision to deny it. Mr. Mercurio. I, I think just taking a step back, to me the question is, can the ramp be built without widening the walkway? And to me, the answer is yes, it can. It can. We did. I'm sorry. We did with my son, and we just we didn't change anything. Mr. DeJohn. So, Mr. Phipps, is uh, this goes from 36 inches wide to seven foot wide? Is that correct? 13.4. So, so these boxes aren't a foot, they're... No, I believe the scale is eight inches to two feet a foot. Eight inches to two feet a foot. Sorry, I'm not an uh, architect that did the best drawing I could. Did anyone stop out at the house to see? I know, Mr. Mercurio, I know you did. Do you mean council? Yes, did any of the council yes. members step out? When they come for the permit for the ramp, if they cannot sit on paver, pavers, then you wouldn't get you wouldn't get the approval, correct? I mean, just they could. They could oh, add pavers there. They could cut out poles for pole poles. Right. Poles that support the right. deck. Exactly. Pavers if they cut them up. Well, either they way. Can. However, the point being, <laughs> why would you do that? <laughs> why would James? Thank you, Mr. Phipps. Are there any other questions for Mr. Phipps before he sits down? Thank you, Mr. Jamison. Okay, if we are going to agree with granting the variance, which is what um, BZA has done, we will vote yes. If you feel you would like to reverse or modify that uh, BZA vote, you will vote no. And we need five votes to overturn. <clears throat> Roll call on the motion to approve. Mr. Mercurio? No. Mrs. Finney? No. Mrs. Sabetta? Yes. Mr. DeJohn? Yes. Mrs. Snyder? Yes. Mr. Mano? No. Mrs. Tressy. Yes. 
four to three, so the uh, variance has been granted. And resolution 2017-42 has been adopted. We'll move on now to resolution 2017-43, Mr. Murphy. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Resolution number 217-43, a resolution determining the premises known as 6500 Peeper Hollow Lane, Mayfield Heights, Ohio, Cuyahoga County Permanent Parcel Number 862-24-002 to be a public nuisance, authorizing the mayor to issue a purchase order for the demolition of the single-family dwelling and attached garage and declaring an emergency. First reading. Is there a motion to suspend the rules? Moved by Mrs. Finney, seconded by Mr. Mercurio. Roll call on the motion to suspend. Mrs. Snyder? Yes. Mr. DeJohn? Yes. Mr. Mano? Yes. Mr. Mercurio? Yes. Mrs. Sabetta? Yes. Mrs. Finney? Yes. Mrs. Tressy? Yes. <coughs> Do I have a motion to approve? Moved by Mrs. Snyder, seconded by Mr. Mano. This resolution pertains to the single family home that is located at 6500 uh, Peeper <coughs> Hollow. The mayor is requesting we vote to allow the mayor to authorize a purchase order to have the property demolished at is, as it is unfit for human occupancy per the inspection of our building director. Is there anyone here regarding this item? So, uh, Mr. Murphy. Thank you. <laughs> I was waving at you. Um, this uh, came to the attention of the administration um, because there is a uh, small creek that goes along the, the edge of the property. I think it's partially on the property, partially on the other property um, to the east. And um, the property owner here built a wall, kind of like a retaining wall, which during one of the recent storms uh, fell into the creek and is currently blocking the uh, stormwater flow in the creek. Um, so that became uh, the element of looking at it as a nuisance. Mr. Jameson went out and looked at it to declare it to, you know, recommend that it be declared a nuisance. And while he was there, he looked at the house as well. And the house is in such condition that it should be demolished if it, should, if it cannot be um, repaired. So there are two pieces of legislation on the agenda this evening. The first is declaring the house and the attached garage to be a nuisance and uh, requesting a purchase order to demolish the, the dwelling um, if they don't do something within 30 days. The next piece of, piece of legislation, 2017-44, um, is a declaration that the current state of the property where the retaining wall is fallen into the creek that's a nuisance and we would like um, authorization to go in and remove the pieces of the wall that have uh, fallen into the creek um, so that uh, the stormwater flow will not be up, will not be um, slowed down because there is uh, where it goes under Peeper hollow itself it's constricted a little bit so you, you need all the flow that you responsibility is that creek to make sure that there's a lot of debris in that in that creek it goes uh, like into a culvert and out how far does it go or where does it go um, it drains a significant amount of Mayfield Heights property to the thing, to the south and to the west going up toward um, the shopping center where Piccolo is, there's a bank, and I believe it also drains across the street um, where some of those buildings are. That's where the drainage comes from. Um, and then it goes um, next to this house under Peeper Hollow, goes under the school, and then comes out uh, on the other side and eventually drains into Gates Mills. And there's been some concerns from people at Gates Mills of the, the drainage the city, Mr. Fernar has been keeping an eye on this for, for several years. There's been litigation over this creek, and uh, um, it, it 
He's had a long, tortured existence, so to speak. The house is lower than the creek, so when the creek flows up, it backfills into the into the, the lower area of the house. Other than the house. Mrs. Benning, thank you. Um, I've been to this house many times over the years, and this. The, I can't even think of the gentleman's name that owned it previously. He would call. I would go out there with the service department, everyone building. I think Diane was there with me once with boots on. And then the problem was is that house kept getting water damage over and over and over till he had to get rid of I mean, I don't even know what happened in the end. But this has gone on, I don't know, years, 10, 15. But it also that water there one of the things is it runs into the first streets of Mayfield Village because some of my girlfriends live down there, and then they get like it looks like lakes in their backyard. Recently. Um, last summer. Because now, oh, okay. Because now I think it goes through the the creek ends up in that uh, the the Stone Creek that more. that development there, yes. and and it flows okay there from what I'm told, but then when it gets further into Gates Mills, but it may be before it gets to Gates Mills. Well, you know the Maybe street, Mayfield. I think it's Bonneville, is it? Right, Bonnie View. Bonnie, Bonnie yeah, View. okay, that's the street that okay. had, and I've been there, and they've called me, you know, over the years, too, over there. You're right. So there, it's been a there mess. There have been complaints, and I know, and, and Mr. Fernaro may be able to uh, uh, address that, but I know the city has been out oh, at no. times and has cleared out that, uh, that creek. And it's my understanding that it's now down the bedrock, so you can't excavate it anymore. This is as low as it's going to go. Oh, the city was there. I can't even tell you. Every time there was a big rain, you knew they were going straight there. Mm -hmm. And what about the residents of this home? I understand they're not living in the house now. I saw the notice on the front door, mm -hmm. but they still live in the city. Mr. Jameson, would you mind coming? I, I always tell you you should sit in the front row. <laughs> You never take my advice. <laughs> Work off his dinner. Doesn't live in the city of Mayfield Heights. Does it? Oh, okay. No. Uh, so I, I, I ironically spoke to some of the neighbors who told me that um, they just saw like a car in the yard and they thought it was the one of the, the residents who and one of them works yeah. like close by in the area here. The police chief uh, found him staying in Chagrin Falls. So he, he, that was an address he had. I don't know if he spoke to him or not, but the house is in foreclosure. It is in foreclosure. You're right. It's in foreclosure, and uh, I don't see him recovering. Mr. DeJohn. Mr. Jamison, uh, will the Cuyahoga County Land Bank, Land Bank be notified? Um, I don't know. And I can try, but I don't think the Cuyahoga County Land Bank, this isn't one of the properties that I designated when we received our grant. So I can only try. I, I thought we routinely notify them when we find a nuisance property to give them first rights to either rehab it or um, demolish it. Uh, no. Mr. Jamison, if I may, it's provided in the legislation that the land bank will get a crack at it if they're interested in it. That's that's what we always do. We provide in there that the at the discretion of the mayor if the land bank will do it, let them do it. Correct. Then we may be able to uh, use the money from the So, Madam President. Yes. Mrs. Spetta? Yes. I was at the house last night and there was a front porch light, a very large front porch light on. So, if nobody's there, who's in and out of it's the house? It's been on. Yeah, I noticed that too. It was on during the day too. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's on. It's been on for a long time. Good electricity. <laughs> So it, it looks like there's a recycle bin and a trash uh, tote in the garage, and it, uh, there's debris in both of them. So right. someone must be there putting debris in the trash container. Yeah. They must you have know, access. I could we couldn't get inside. I mean, I, I would have deemed immediately that would require a search warrant. 
so if land if land bank were to take the, they'll decide if they want the house or not if they want to do the demolition am i correct they could say no or they could well if they want to acquire the property right and then the property will belong to them the property Sell. will belong to them to resell or there's a lot of different things they can do but Mr. Murphy, yeah. you're still waving at me. Uh, uh -huh. it's, it's, and it's not that simple. I forget to mention that um, it is in foreclosure. Um, I spoke to the attorney for the uh, bank today, and they have been trying to track down the, the owner, and they haven't been able to get mm -hmm. service on him. Actually, they did get service on him, but um, um, he did not answer the complaint, so they received a default judgment last week. And um, now they will proceed to sheriff's sale, and somebody may buy it at sheriff's sale. It, their judgment is for two hundred and eleven thousand dollars, which is far more than the property is worth. So it's but that's for sure. Make, make a pun. It's it's underwater, it, um, <laughs> literally and figuratively. <laughs> exactly. Right. It really so, is underwater. You know, that that may be outside the the control of the city as to what happens to the property. We we could tear it down. We would put it on the tax duplicate and get that paid, but you know the ownership is going to go go to the bank or whoever right. buys it at sheriff's sale, and that's on down the road. And then it'll be our responsibility to clean up this culvert. That's round two. <laughs> okay. At at any event, we want to be able to clean up the culvert so that the the river will, will run freely, so to speak. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Dijon. Mr. Jameson, is this buildable property? Should they destroy the house? Um, In your honest opinion, I would imagine. I mean, but I don't know why anybody would want to build there with the kind of drainage problems they have. I mean, you know, you'd have to you'd have to put so much money into protecting the home. Right now, the home is lower than the creek. The, the bottom floor of the home is lower than the creek, so the creek floods without their retaining wall, and the, and the house floods. Like Mrs. Finney said, they, they get water a lot. And the, the same thing, uh, for 10, 11 years I've been here, Mrs. Abenauer, Abenauer, I think, owned it previously, and uh, she had nothing but problems. And she might have been the one that put that retaining I thought the next man did. Maybe. Maybe. And the watershed is not responsible for the creek? Susan, do you know? Well, it's not that they're responsible. What they would do would be, would help out in what it needs. You know, but we're not supposed to be putting anything in the creek. But would the watershed um, come and... It would come and do a site and, and visit, yes. And clean and it up and... They would help or they would find a grant if that's what they do. I don't know if they've been called before. This is the first time I've heard of this house. Mr. Jameson, do you know if um, Euclid Creek Watershed or Chagrin Watershed have been notified about the creek? The... Uh over, over time, they have. I'm, they're certainly aware of it. I'd have to have Dan answer that for me. Uh, Dan? <laughs> Dan is more of the stormwater manager, uh, and he would have more insight. I mean, it, it is an obstruction that was cr created by the property owner. I know that. But to what end? So I know a little bit about it, but uh, enough to be dangerous. But uh, the uh, there's two methods that would work, uh, could possibly. Regional Sewer District, they look at it, but it's not a big enough watershed for them, so they would be out. Um, any of the um, watershed groups may look at it. Um, I'm not sure, but I think the Euclid Creek, I don't think that is in the Euclid Creek watershed. I think Bayfield Heights has three watershed groups. So um, have they been contacted? I have not, and I don't know if there would be grants to clean up something that was a nuisance that was put in. Typically, they do restoration of creek, the, the trees and that kind of thing. In this case, I don't think that's in order, but we can contact and find out. In any event, getting the debris out of the creek is probably um, a 
most important at this point to keep the flows going through the creek at this point. So if we can, if we can see what we can do. Thank you, Mr. Gerson. Any other comments, questions for Mr. Gerson or Mr. Jameson? Thank you both. <laughs> We're next. Okay. Any other discussion? Roll call on the motion to approve. Mrs. Sabetta? Yes. Mr. Mano? Yes. Mr. Mercurio? Yes. Mrs. Finney? Yes. Mrs. Snyder? Yes. Mr. DeJohn? Yes. Mrs. Tressy? Yes. Resolution 2017-43 has been approved. We'll move on to resolution 2017-44, Mr. Murphy. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, resolution number 2017-44, a resolution declaring the real property known as Cuyahoga County Permanent Parcel Number 862-24-002, 6500 Peeper Hollow Lane, to be a nuisance, authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract for the work necessary to abate the nuisance and declaring an emergency. First reading. Is there a motion to suspend the rules? Moved by Mrs. Finney, seconded by Mr. Mercurio. Roll call on the motion to suspend. Mr. Mano? Yes. Mr. Mercurio? Yes. Mr. DeJohn? Yes. Mrs. Sabetta? Yes. Mrs. Finney? Yes. Mrs. Snyder? Yes. Mrs. Tressy? Yes. Do I have a motion to approve? Moved by Mrs. Snyder, seconded by Mr. Mano. Again, this resolution is regarding the property at Peeper Hollow that has been declared a nuisance by our building director. Um, they've given them a three-day notice to the homeowner to abate the property, and um, apparently that they have not responded to that. Mr. Murphy, do you want to add anything about this resolution? Uh, only that this nuisance is the um, part of the wall that's fallen into the creek, and this would enable the city to come in. Um, I'm not sure with our own forces or uh, with a contractor to uh, to clear the creek so that it uh, storm water will run freely again, and then of course that will be put on the uh, tax duplicate okay. for collection, and we'll get that out of them when the when and if the property is sold at foreclosure, if it's sold. Okay. Just that it's Chances barely it's underwater. Hmm. Mr. Jameson, uh, do you or Mr. Fanaro, do you know if? Um, this will go out to a contractor, or will it be done in-house through our service department? Any other comments or discussion on this? Roll call on the motion to approve. Mr. DeJohn? Yes. Mrs. Snyder? Yes. Mrs. Finney? Yes. Mr. Mercurio? Yes. Mr. Mano? Yes. Mrs. Sabetta? Yes. Mrs. Tressy? Yes. Resolution 2017-44 has been approved. We'll move on to resolution 2017-45, Mr. Murphy. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, resolution number 2017-45, a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with Old Dominion Brush Company, Inc., for the purchase of a trailer-mounted vacuum debris collector for use by the Mayfield Heights Service Department and declaring an emergency. First reading. Is there a motion to suspend the rules? Moved by Mrs. Finney. Second by Mrs. Snyder. Roll call on the motion to suspend. Mrs. Finney? Yes. Mrs. Sabetta? Yes. Mrs. Snyder? Yes. Mr. Mano? Yes. Mr. DeJohn? Yes. Mr. Mercurio? Yes. Mrs. Tressy? Yes. Do I have a motion to approve? Moved by Mr. Mano, seconded by Mrs. Sabetta. The resolution before council is a request to purchase a trailer mounted vacuum debris collector to vacuum the leaves at curbside in the fall. The cost of the equipment $53,638.50 and we've chosen Old Dominion Brush Company as the vendor. Is there any other discussion or comments? Mr. Mano. Joe, is this a new piece or are we at, or replacing a piece? Adding another, okay, thank you. 
Will this be the second one we have, Mr. Fanaro? Our third. Any other comments, discussion? Roll call on the motion to approve. Mr. Mercurio? Yes. Mrs. Finney? Yes. Mrs. Sabetta? Yes. Mr. Dijon? Yes. Mrs. Snyder? Yes. Mr. Mano? Yes. Mrs. Tressy? Yes. Resolution 2017-45 has been approved. We'll move on to resolution 2017-46. Mr. Murphy? Thank you, Madam Chairman. Resolution number 2017-46. A resolution accepting a certain bid for treated rock salt and declaring an emergency. Uh, the proposed contractor is Morton Salt, Inc. Is there a motion to suspend the rolls? Moved by Mr. Mano, <coughs> seconded by Mrs. Finney. Roll call on the motion to suspend. Mrs. Snyder? Yes. Mr. Dijon? Yes. Mr. Mano? Yes. Mr. Mercurio? Yes. Mrs. Sabetta? Yes. Mrs. Finney? Yes. Mrs. Tressy? Yes. Do I have a motion to approve? Moved by Mrs. Snyder, seconded by Mrs. Sabetta. The resolution before council is to approve um, a bid for treated rock salt from Morton at the rate of either $41.42 per ton if it's still delivered by Piler or $42.92 if delivered by dump delivery. The memo from Mr. Tribby states that Mr. Fernaro is going to purchase the salt delivered by the dump delivery from Morton Salt. Mr. Tribby, do you want to add anything? No, that uh, pretty well covers it. So why, may I ask a quick question? Why do we have both um, why do we have both prices in the resolution? Why wouldn't the resolution just state um, the amount that we're going to spend from Morton Salt for dump delivery? Your memo states that that's what we're going to that's what we're going to do, but it has both prices in here. That's normally how we would purchase the salt, but there can be a situation where it's possible the service department might want some uh, piler delivery for particular reason maybe they would like to blow it farther back into the, the dome this way you have the ability to pay the higher price if necessary it's just a, a backup if you will in case there's a reason to have to use piler do we often use um, the delivery method to the piler method mr. Fanaro no I'm sorry any other comments discussion roll call on the motion to approve mrs sabetta yes mr mano yes mr mercurio yes mrs finney yes mrs snyder yes mr dijon yes mrs dressy yes resolution 2017-46 has been approved we'll move on to resolution 2017-47 mr murphy thank you madam chairman Resolution number 2017-47, a resolution accepting a certain bid for rock salt treated with liquid magnesium chloride and declaring an emergency. The proposed contractor is Cargill, Inc. Is there a motion to suspend the rules? Moved by Mrs. Snyder, seconded by Mr. Mercurio. Roll call on the motion to suspend. Mrs. Finney? Yes. Mrs. Sabetta? Yes. Mrs. Snyder? Yes. Mr. Mano? Yes. Mr. Dijon? Yes. Mr. Mercurio? Yes. Mrs. Tressy? Yes. Do I have a motion to approve? Moved by Mr. Mano. Second by Mrs. Snyder. Okay, this is for Cargill and this is for the liquid magnesium chloride at the price of either $54.76 for dump delivery or $59.26 for piler delivery. Any other comments or discussion? Roll call on the motion to approve. Mr. Tri oh, Mr. Dijon. Um, have we used this uh, magnesium chloride in the past? <coughs> Mr. 
So you've used it two years ago, and you find this more effective than rock salt? We only used it, and we only ordered 100 tons of it. I don't think we got a good look at what it could do. So this was, since it came down $10 a ton in price, I was thinking it might be another shopping trip. And do you use it in certain areas at certain times? Or? We did, but when we used it two years ago, it was such a snowstorm that we were salting right after we put it down, so I don't think we got a good look at what it could do. Okay. Will you move, uh, will you use this on the main roads like Mayfield or San? Probably. Or on the side? Side roads. Side roads? So we can actually see, there's too much traffic on the main roads to really get a good look at what it could do. Thank you. But it is worse for our cars, is that correct? Probably no. Better. Is it better. greener? Yeah. We'll call on the motion to approve. Mr. Mercurio? Yes. Mrs. Finney? Yes. Mrs. Sabetta? Yes. Mr. DeJohn? Yes. Mrs. Snyder? Yes. Mr. Mano? Yes. Mrs. Tressy? Yes. Resolution 2017-47 has been approved. We will now move on to ordinances and we'll begin with ordinance 2017-16. Mr. Murphy. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Ordinance number 2017-16, an ordinance amending ordinance number 2017-9. The appropriation expenditures of the City of Mayfield Heights, State of Ohio, for the fiscal year ending December 31, 2017. First reading. Is there a motion to suspend the rolls? Moved by Mrs. Finney, seconded by Mr. Mercurio. Roll call on the motion to suspend. Mrs. Snyder? Yes. Mr. DeJohn? Yes. Mr. Mano? Yes. Mr. Mercurio? Yes. Mrs. Sabetta? Yes. Mrs. Finney? Yes. Mrs. Tressy? Yes. Do I have a motion to approve? Moved by Mrs. Sabetta, seconded by Mr. Mercurio. We've each received a memo from Mr. Tribby with regard to this appropriation. Mr. Tribby, would you like to add anything? No, but I'd be more than happy to answer any questions you might have. Have any questions for Mr. Tribby? Mr. DeJohn. Mr. Tribby, uh, this extra $8,100 uh, for the community center roof, can you explain that? As I indicated in the memo, we had enough in the overall appropriation to cover that extra amount that you approved at the last meeting. But the particular line item, there was not sufficient funds, so this, in effect, puts that amount of money in, the, uh, in that particular line item. It's just an accounting move to actually balance it out. It's similar to the end of the year when you've got overdrafts in one account and you've got funds available in another line item. We just moved it around. This is what's going to happen here. I see. It's just doing it six months ahead of time. Any other comments? Discussion? Roll call on the motion to approve. Mrs. Sabetta? Yes. Mr. Mano? Yes. Mr. Mercurio? Yes. Mrs. Finney? Yes. Mrs. Snyder? Yes. Mr. DeJohn? Yes. Mrs. Tressy? Yes. Ordinance 2017-16 has been approved. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll move on to motions, and we'll have Mr. Murphy do our first motion. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Motion to advertise for bids for the renovation, renovation of Oakville Park. Do I have a motion to approve? Moved by Mrs. Sabetta, seconded by Mrs. Snyder. I believe we applied for a grant for the renovation of Oakville Park. Mr. Gerson, would you please come up to the podium? Thank you. Yeah, so this is for the uh, renovations of taking out one ball field and the pavilion and uh, creating two new ball fields and a, a multi-purpose activity field. Um, there was a grant that we got from the community block grant that was granted, but the funds were being told may not be available. So those funds were specifically tied to playground equipment, parking, other upgrades. But we did receive a nature grants um, in the amount of 52,000, something like that. And that was specifically for the ball field. 
decided to do is go ahead and do it in a two parts. So we're looking to do the ball field renovation first so that we can get the 52,000 grant that has to be done, I believe, by the end of the year. And all the paperwork has to be done to be able to get reimbursement. And then if the funds become available for the community block grant, then we'll go ahead and do that in the second phase, but most likely that'll be next year if the funds are available. So with the summer session, we want to go ahead and get advertised, and once we get the bids in, we can go ahead and decide if it's something the council wants to do. So we've only received the one grant for 52,000. I believe it's 52. And is that community block grant an annual? Um, um, it is, uh, and like I say, the nature grants is a 52,000 right. that we've we've applied for and received approval for that. Uh, the plans have gone into Nature Works; they've approved the plans, so they're ready to go on that. So it's part of just for advertising the ball field renovations. The community block grant is annually, um, but they did um, we did we did receive it. We were grant awarded last year, reduced this year, but with the new budgeting. With the Trump presidency, but all those funds were basically put on hold. So I believe we have a meeting tomorrow, tomorrow, this week with uh, Mike Tawarnicki. He's with the county about if and when those community block grants and funds would be available. If they do become available, we know when, then we can do the rest of the renovation and parking and use them, utilize those funds. So those funds were not for the ball field, they were for playgrounds. And right, for playgrounds. And Any other questions for Mr. Gerson? Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Roll call on the motion to approve. Mr. Mercurio? Yes. Mrs. Finney? Yes. Mrs. Savetta? Yes. Mr. DeJohn? Yes. Mrs. Snyder? Yes. Mr. Mano? Yes. Mrs. Mm -hmm. Tressy? Yes. This motion has been carried. Seeing nothing else on our agenda, do I, Mr. Mano? I have a question for the law director. <coughs> Just, I want a clarification on something. In our package, there's a liquor license, liquor license uh, permit for Chucky, Chucky e. Cheese Pizza. I was not aware that they served alcohol there, since that is basically a children's venue. <laughs> I mean, that the place is a punch palace to begin with. <laughs> They've had nothing but trouble there that goes on and on and on. Is this a request for a, a, a renewal or is it being transferred to another entity? It almost looks like they may have sold it and somebody else is, is picking it up. The application indicates that it's for a change of corporate stock ownership. So I would imagine and I'm not familiar with it, but I believe then that there would be a permit issued and the city is being notified that the corporate ownership is being changed. So the certificate is being transferred, sold perhaps. Is there anything we can sure. do to slow that situation down up there? And, and cause, They've been uh, serving alcohol there since they opened. That's, that's not... The point. The point is that is primarily a venue for children, and you know what happens in there. People throw chairs at people. People do all kinds of crazy things in that place. Why exacerbate it by having alcohol? I mean, it, it just doesn't make the, sense. The alcohol is already there. They're talking about changing the corporate ownership of the, the liquor license. What you can do is indicate that you want a hearing, in which case then you'll receive all of the information regarding what the application is for. And then you can determine at that point whether or not you want to go forward with the hearing. You can always pull out. But this notification is basically, do you want a hearing or don't you? I think we should at least check into it. We, I mean, th there's got to be a record of all the problems that have, that have been going on there for I mean, if you just go back the, over the last two years, how many how many incidents has there been there where the police have had to go in there? And, and that's the vehicle that you use when there's either a renewal of the permit or a new permit or a transfer of the permit. You, you request a hearing and you make your concerns known. So 
of that is correct. It's as we want to do. So. Mr. DeJohn. Mr. Murphy, can we uh, have an ordinance that would prevent alcohol from being in a children's venue like that, in a retail establishment? Uh, no. In a word, uh, permitting of alcohol is a state function. The city really has no say in um, who sells it or where they sell it or what they sell as long as they have a permit from the state, is my understanding. And how do we go about having a hearing on this? Check the box that says we request a hearing. And who <laughs> will do that? <laughs> Will you do that, or uh, I could, yeah, because I've done those before, where the city, uh, not this city, but other cities, has objected. Like Mr. Mano said, it's you know there's a lot of problems there. There's a lot of fights, police calls, etc. So you know you want to go into the, the hearing, and that's when they've been um, renewing permits. You come in and, and you let them know exactly what. So you'll go ahead and do that then for yes, us? I Thank can you. Do, that. do you have to go down to the state to do that? Or, or is it written? No, 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 no. It, it's it's personal, in person. And you go down to the state office from it. You don't have to go to Columbus. Actually, I think it, it indicates where you want it. In our county, Cedar in Columbus. Yeah. Yeah, so, of course, you want it here. Of course. Home, home court. Yeah. Any other Thank you. comments? So our next, before we adjourn our next council meeting, special council meeting, if um, we need to have one. Does council want to request a hearing? Does oh, do we have, a, do we have to do a vote? I'll make that motion to request a hearing. I'll second it. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? I was wondering if we could have a little more discussion on that. I, oh, before, yeah, I was just wondering course. if, can we get the actual police calls to it? Because I've never heard of any problems there maybe there is maybe there isn't but I was wondering if we can before we go to a hearing maybe we should get the actual amount or number of police calls first well I could do that our chief is not uh, here, here tonight right. so we'll have to uh, mr. Murphy can you request that from um, I can request that but you must request the hearing uh, by August 7th we're not gonna meet again so we can we can always pull out though correct yes okay we can. What, what I'd suggest is let's request a hearing okay. and then we'll get Agreed. the police calls and I'll do a report and and council can then determine what if you want to go forward or not so, so how do we do that before August 7th oh, we will request the hearing yeah. okay and then the hearing will be held sometime I, I don't have the, any idea how long that takes to, to set up the hearing I forget so um, I just like to know how the rest of the council feels about alcohol with children Well, I think venue. it's unusual to have alcohol in a I thought it was very in a unusual like child's Mr. Uh, venue. Yeah. They what? They do it at play. At play also. It's a children's venue and there's a big bar right in the front of it. Not not the same thing. Children's venue uh, old enough to play the gaming machines. Uh, this situation here, you're talking about toddlers and and very young children. Yeah, you are, um, but on um, play also there's a lot no. of children there. I've had a lot of people, a lot of people tell me, you know, how do they get away keeping that place open with all the problems they have there? So I think it's, it's, it's worthwhile to check into it. And I would tell you to go back, don't go back one year, go back two years. Well, I will tell you right now from safety and transportation, I, that was, I think, our number one call several years in a row. And I, I could be wrong. It could have been a joke, but I think I, but I it was it. the truth, right? Madam Chairman. Yes, Mrs. Sabetta. I have a question for the law director. Okay, so if this is concerning letting us know that it's a corporate ownership, what exactly would be our venue, you know, to deny the corporate ownership or to question the transfer, the permit? It would be simpler if the permit were up for renewal because Correct. then you could raise all of the concerns that council that the city has with regard to what goes on there and the number of police calls nuisance etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, I, I don't think there's as the city's going to have as much 
voice in a simple change of corporate ownership. But then, then again, I could be wrong too because you know, if if it's been sold, you'd want to see who the new who the new owners are. And you know, th there is a, a statutory procedure that you follow in the hearing, so I could look at that and see exactly what um, we've got to show. I've never been the one where um, you know it's been a change of ownership. It's always been you know the permit is being renewed and you come in and you say hey there's been a lot of police calls to this place and we we'll call it a punch palace or whatever you want to call it and uh, you know you say we don't want this permit renewed it's a state function Mrs. Snyder um, well maybe with <coughs> new ownership they would want to know all the, all the calls that we do get there I mean they and probably have no idea you know, but, they, but I will say that I do know other Chuck E. Cheese's do have alcohol as well like men are there's one on the west side so i know we're not the only one and then the other thing common i just have is how can you determine how many calls are alcohol related like how many people are really drinking and causing an issue like what like how do you it would be hard to determine that. all you could do is look at the, the report itself and right. see not the kids punching each other out it's the adults <laughs> But it would say if, if two juveniles got into a, a fight or something like that, that would be evidence that it's not alcohol related. If two fathers or two mothers or whatever. I would think the mothers, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, no offense, women. Then, you know, it, 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 I would hope it would be reflected in the police report that, you know, it's yeah. alcohol related. Having the new owners know this might be a really good thing. Good. Oh. I have a question. Yes. Mr. DeJohn. Um Mr. Murphy, can you let us know when that license is up for renewal? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, I can go on the website and, and look at that. So, Lisa, do you have the roll call or the uh, the vote on that, or do we need to do that again? You have the motion. We did not take a vote. Okay, so we had a motion. I second the motion. And Mr. Mano seconded. Yeah. And we'll do all in well, let's do roll call. Mrs. Snyder? Yes. Mr. DeJohn? Yes. Mr. Mano? Yes. Mr. Mercurio? Yes. Mrs. Sabetta? Yes. Mrs. Finney? Yes. Mrs. Tressy? Yes. That motion has been carried. What is that noise all of a sudden? I don't know. Mrs. Uh, Lisa? We had box cast. I can tell you what you're hearing. I know. <laughs> Well, so if we are to have an, a meeting in August, it would be August 21st, and that will depend on um, BZA and what becomes uh, before BZA. So I don't know if you have any idea um, of anything on it coming up on your agenda. There was supposed to, at our last meeting, there was supposed to be three cases. Uh, one of the applicants could not make it, right. so I'm not quite sure when that applicant will be will be appearing. It is time to go. Do I have a motion to adjourn?